Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm going to continue here with my um, assembly instructions. We're going to start off with step seven. I left off on the last video on step six. Um, come on, go forward. There we go. So um, first thing we're doing here is we're working on the gearbox. So uh, we have to first assemble the spur gear. Now with the frog, it comes with three different gear ratios, right? We could do the 7 to 3, uh, 7 3, 6 to 7 or the 8 dot 5, uh, depending upon the style of car or track you're going to run on. So um, if you're going for all out top speed, go here with the um, 6.7 gear ratio and you'll see that it requires the 49 tooth spur gear. Um, I built mine we're using the standard setup which is the 50 tooth spur gear and when you look on your spur gear you'll have three of these guys and they're they've got it marked on the inside here whether it's 50 49 or 52 tooth okay so um, because I went with the standard type I matched up my 58 tooth spur gear and I'll be using the 18 tooth pinion gear later on um, so you get all these bits and pieces together and you basically Put them together like so. Um, the the metal spur gear will push through the larger pinion gear or the larger spur gear part, um, and you will then uh, push it all the way through so that you can see this little groove extends beyond the plastic that you can then snap this ring into that then holds these two bits together, and then you also you push in the ball bearings into the both ends. So you see it says MD2, um, those are ball bearings, you use two of them. You pull it on both sides of this aluminum spur gear. Um, and that's how that assembles up. And then you can move on. That was not very difficult, was it? Uh, the most difficult thing you'll have with all of this is getting this ring snapped down. Um, what I found is is that if I pushed the middle, the the part most opposite the opening, if I pushed that on and then used my thumbs um, to work around the edge like this, um, pushing down, um, then the two ends sort of expanded out and snapped down in, and that was the easiest way that I found to work that. Okay, so uh, gearbox one, you got to gather up all these bits. So we've got these dark screws here, you need two of those. We've got these um, shaft uh, hexy things that we used um, before in the gearbox. Oh, thinking back in the past, uh, actually use them here in the gearbox. Oh, use them in the chassis, okay? Um, in the front part of the chassis, use those things too. Uh, this is the wrong bevel gear. I grabbed the, the wrong one. You can see from the illustration here from my picture, this is the wrong one. Um, but uh, I actually installed it correctly, and you'll see in the pictures that I, I realized it partway through and grabbed the other gear. Um, but they are different, so you can see that the splines on this are on the opposite side of the ridge, and the one that we need has the splines on the same side as the ridge. And then we have our bevel gears and then more ball bearings. And these ball bearings come with the kit, by the way. Um, so I haven't gone into any extra ball bearings yet. So these ball bearings come with the kit. And then you got to cut these little plastic bits out um, and gather and cut out your... Uh, center part of your gear housing and get the um, right half of the gear box. So these are stamped metal pieces and on this, on the, if you flip this over you'd see that there was an R. So take a look at your piece and make sure you're using the one that says R. And then you also need your grease. So the first thing you do is you get your um, differential gear with the little splines and um, I put a little bit of the ceramic grease in those nubs, right? And then you sort of snap, these guys snap in, right? You snap all three of them in and then um, put a little bit of grease on them themselves. So then you get the little white part here, um, both of them. So the one that's underneath this bevel gear has a notch, right? So you'll see, if I back it up, you see this notch right here, okay? So this white part, which is this guy right here, it has a plastic extruded bit, like a little raised edge. So this white part here goes into this hole, and there's a little edge that goes into that notch, okay? And then this just sits on top. It, it's just held there by gravity and uh, force of will, So um, at least at this point. So don't um, worry if this is slapping around. So you just got to be really careful with what you're doing. Then you get your um, gearbox housing, and you set that down on top. 
set that down on top, make sure that your spacers are put in and that the hexes line up. Um, and again, this is all just so far held in by gravity. And that's it. So not much to the first half of the gearbox. So then you do gearbox number two, you gather up all your bits. So we've got um, B bag screws, C bag screws, um, D bag nuts. Um, we need three, and we need two, and we need three, and then we've got this uh, shaft here, um, and this is in one of those unlabeled bags. Um, two more spacers, actually five more spacers. These are hollow, this is solid. Um, and then you get the other bevel gear. This is the one from the original picture, but this is actually the side that it's used on. And then another, the other one of those uh, plastic rings, and then we put another ball bearing in. That also comes with a kit. Um, so this is our spline gear from step one, and then this is um, the gearbox. All right. So this is what we have thus far. Uh, we we drop everything down in. So we take our bevel gear and we set it on top of our differential, and then we put the pin into the hole. Let me, whoops. Let me back it up. See if I can show you here. All right. So we've got the we've got the differential being built. And then we set our spline gear, and see so we have our little plastic jobby here, okay? Um, and then it's still in here. And then this shaft goes into that plastic jobby. Okay, so don't make the mistake that I did. And I thought I would be, hey, this really could use, this thing here could use some grease. Right, so I put a little bit of grease in there. And then I put it on the opposite side. But you know what? The grease creates too much distance in it, the, the gear housing wouldn't go together. So I had to wipe all the grease off the shaft. So the directions do not call to put grease on here, and there's a reason for that. So don't put grease on the shaft, at least on the ends, because they've got to put into those little plastic bits. All right. So again, so far this is all just held in by gravity. Here are our spacers. Those are those metal hollow tubes. We put them in those five positions. Okay. Um, these brass screw and spacers are in here by gravity. This is still all just stacked on top of each other, just held in by gravity. Um, and then you have to screw the other side and screw it together. All right, so these are those white plastic things that has that shaft going through it. This is the back side of those. Um, so what happens is this, these black screws go through these metal spacers, um, which is good because that means they're putting pressure upon metal and then metal so this black thing is plastic is not really um, getting a lot of pressure put onto it which is good but um, you've got to kind of sandwich it all together right so you put it all together you've got to hold your hand on one side when you flip it over to put the screws through put the screws down through and then you've got to somehow work the nut on the back side. So again, this is really handy if you're an octopus or you have three hands. Um, eventually, obviously, I worked it out, but um, it might be handy if you have a person to help you um, if you're new to this or whatever, so that you can keep all this stuff sandwiched together without it slipping around like this, right? Keep it all sandwiched together nice and orderly. Um, I use my fingers um, up on the inside of here and find the grooves, right, the, where the, the, the shape my fingers fit comfortably in a couple of these spots, these little indentations. Um, I run it all the way up to hold all the pieces together like a sandwich, and then I was able to get it together. So that's what the gearbox looks like, all assembled. So uh, now that we have our gearbox assembled, um, I, I would go ahead and turn this to make sure everything is turning smoothly. Um, remember, this part in here is going to be a little sloppy. Um, the gear in here is going to be a little sloppy because it doesn't actually have anything no no alignment pins or anything like that so don't worry if it's still slopping around a bit the alignment pins will come later um, and then we need the body mount and we need a couple of these small screws and a couple of these long screws and then you take out the screws that you just tirelessly put in which I'm like what the hell seriously but you can kindly kind of read here where it says remove screws so the four screws that you installed here and here and then the two on the back side right here and here they come out after you've put the thing together within like 10 seconds you put them in you take them right back out again because you mate that up you bring the the transmission the gearbox up into the chassis and the long screws go into the top and they screw into the spot where you just had the small screws that were like a placeholder and then 
uh, you put the small screws in the bottom. But this is what I found. Um, the small screws are very recessed. Like, the head of the screw is about here. And my 4-in-1 screwdriver was too thick to go into the hole. So I had to go and get a small shaft Phillips head screwdriver so that it would go into the hole far enough to reach the screw head. So if you're using a 4-in-1 like I am, uh, don't get frustrated and make sure you have, for this one step, a thin, thinner shaft Phillips head screwdriver that will go all the way in. It's got to go in a good inch to two inches. And then this is what it looks like when it's all mounted up. Uh, you put the motor mounts or the body mounts through. Um, I screwed them all the way until there was um, the flush part was only visible, that there were no threads visible on this side, and that my body hole pins were vertical so that the body pins would go in vertically. It would be easier to pull them in and out, I think, at this point. Although, like I said, I've not built this car before, so I might be wrong. Um, also, a fair amount of threads protrude past the body, and I looked in all the pictures and stuff, and this seems to be true. So um, it's assembled correctly. Um, they are adjustable so that if you have not enough distance once you put the body on or too much, you can screw those in and out um, to give your the right amount of width and you can also adjust them whichever direction you want these pins to go in. So that's what the, the gearbox looks like when it's attached to the chassis. Now if you look down here the battery um, door snaps up into here and on that I think it's the B tree, the white tree, um, there's a plastic pin that then pushes into this hole to hold your battery door closed. Um, I think in racing I'm probably just going to use zip ties. I don't think I'm going to use that little plastic pin. I'm not sure how durable that little plastic pin is. It's pretty thick, right? It's pretty good diameter, but I'm not sure how durable that's going to be. So I'm guessing in racing I'm probably just going to use a zip tie to hold this together. Um, but at any rate, I went ahead and put it in because um, this freaking door kept flopping on me. So if, you, if you're tired of this door flopping around on you, then I would say go ahead and install that battery door pin. Even though the directions don't call for it, you can put it in and remove it. So now we're up to step 11, which is the drive shaft assembly. Um, you get your dog bones here. Now in the original Frog, I remember back in the day, uh, both the Frog and the Wild one that my buddy had and the Subaru Brat, they all had these half shafts, right? These are called drive shafts now, but they were called half shafts back then, I think. But instead of having a dog bone sort of end on them, they had this hex head, um, and those freaking hex heads would strip within like you just look at them sideways and they would strip out so it's nice to see that they've updated the kit to ha include dog bones instead of those hex heads because th those are terrible um, and your your bo your boots here these CV joint boots um, they come in one long rubber thing and you actually have to cut them apart and then sh and s cut them down and then you need your grease so these are the parts that you need and um, I got my little handy dandy mat out and I cut them down now you see on the end here there's a there's a rubber piece, and then there's a ridge, and then there's some little dips here. So the instructions call for it to be cut just shy of this first ridge. So this bit here is gone. So I cut it here in the middle, thinking I would need those, and then when I got to the directions, I realized, okay, I actually don't need this bit of rubber here in between. All of that goes away. This bit of rubber goes away. This bit of rubber goes away. Um, my guess is um, maybe other vehicles, they use that extra bit, but for the frog, they don't. So uh, I cut it here in the middle, and then I ended up having to cut it again here and here, and then here, and then here. So use that um, the blue tub, the little blue tub grease, and grease up the tip before you shove that axle through the the boot. And I ran a Q-tip on the inside of the boot so that this would slide through. Now these dog bones they get kind of constricted here in the middle part. So if you're finding it's getting constricted, you know, just give it some wiggle and kind of wiggle it angle like this to get that through without jamming it through. Because the last thing you want to do is tear this boot because this boot is keeping your, dr your drive shafts clean from dirt and dust. Once you get those put, once you get the, the dog bones into the boots, then you move on to step 12. Uh, you get yourself some a couple of pins and some little rubber jobbies, and then the instruction manual calls for the bushings, right? But I bought the 
um, bearing kit uh, from Fast Eddie. I'm pretty happy with the, the drive, the little uh, ball bearings that I've got from them. These are sealed. That's what the black ring is. If you just get standard ones like what came with the kit that are inside the, the gearbox, the unsealed ones, they won't have a, a colored plastic ring. I've seen these colored plastic rings in blue and mine are black, but whatever. So you need four of these ball bearings. Or if you're not going with bearing kit, um, they're the, the white plastic bushings. And then you need your drive shafts, and you see we got two long ones, and then one here, and then one here with a longer pin. And then you need your two halves of your 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 rear suspension arms. So this is what it looks like. You um, use your grease, right, to make sure you're greasing up the proper parts, and um, you put the drive sh the, the the drive shaft through, and then you put the pin in to hold it in place so it doesn't drop out. And And this is what it looks like um, from the end. You see that there's a rubber O-ring down inside in a bed of white grease, okay? Um, and the ball bearings are installed in the arm, and then this thing slides through. And then I put this down inside. And then you put the shaft in to the end. Now this is all right now. So this drive shaft is only in there by gravity, and then this is just in there by gravity. So this is all pushed together. All of this uh, drive shaft bits along with the U-joint here and here, that's all just pushed in by gravity. And then this is what that end looks like. Okay, I, I put more grease once it's all in the arm. You see it's in the, the rear suspension arm. So then I, I swabbed up the end with a good bit of that um, MW grease. And then you put the universal joint on the end like that. And then you pull the, the rubber boot up right to the edge. So this is what it looks like when you've got them both together. So the one on this side here, which I guess is the left side, if you're looking the same direction as the driver, it has the drive axle that has the extended pin on it, and this one does not. And then we move on to step 14, which is um, attaching the uh, rear suspension arms up to the body of the car. So you get some screws and you get these two plates here. Um, these are these plates are identical by the way there's not a left or a right um, which is unfortunate because they're stamped out of metal and I was hoping that the rounded edge of the stamp would be on the outside on both and that's not the case they're exactly the same so you're going to end up with one where the rounded edge is on the outside and then you're going to have the other side where the rounded edge is on the inside so the outside edge is a more angular not rounded on the cut so that just is the nature of the way they're stamping the metal out so um, you go ahead and you put the drive shaft in that has the long pin first, right? So the left side goes in, and that's where this gear finally has the inside gear on your gearbox, that one that was just sort of slopping around with no pins to affix it. That long pin keeps it centered now. So that's beautiful. And then you put the arm into the hole. Now you see I put some grease around there. Okay, so that when it moves up and down, we're not rubbing plastic against metal, which will eventually wear this out. So here's going to be a maintenance point. You're going to want to make sure that this stays well greased. And then you put the little arm down over top, and you can see you put grease all around this plastic part before you drop this plate down on top, and then you screw the screws down. And then you do that to the other side. So you can see again, grease up this drill nice. And then this drive shaft goes nicely because the pin is now sticking through. And this drive pad, this drive axle goes into where that pin goes. Whoops. So one more thing that I want to add. Um, they don't call for it in the instructions, but th this point is not the only point where this arm rotates. It also rotates up against the body here. Um, so I also added some grease on this rocker part of the arm here where it meets up against the chassis body so that when it moves up and down, although this is plastic on plastic friction, it's much more important to have grease plastic on metal friction, but we have plastic on plastic friction. I think that adding just a little bit of that grease here is going to also improve the motion of the axle arm, of the suspension arm. So um, that's the end of that. That's the end of step 18. So in the next section, um, we're going to move on to step 14 through 18. Um, sorry, I, you know, I see 18, I say 18, and what I really meant was that was the end of step 13. So next video, we're going to go to step 14 through 18, um, and that covers building the rear dampers, filling them with oil, attaching the rear dampers, which are the shocks, um, attaching the rear dampers, um, attaching the pinion gear to the motor, and then putting the motor into the gearbox. So uh, I hope you find these uh, informative and helpful. If um, I 
like I said, this is the first time I've ever built a frog, so if I'm doing something wrong or I'm giving a tip wrong or if there's a tip that I don't know and didn't say, please put that in the comments and help other people out who are watching this video as well, building their first-time frogs. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video in the next one to come.